One of the most requested videos we've had over the past year is for us to do a review of our Toyota 4Runner as a tow vehicle. So let's go ahead and get it started in this episode of Travels with Delaney. Welcome back everyone. Before we start this week's episode, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified each every time we post a new video. Also, you can check us out on our new website, TravelsWithDelaney.com, and you can stay up with real-time updates on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Travels with Delaney. All right, back to this week's episode. So again, as I said in the opening, a lot of you have asked for me to talk about our 2014 Toyota 4Runner and how it performs as a tow vehicle. Now I can tell you to start with that we bought this vehicle used back in the summer of 2016. At the time I had my 2008 Toyota Tundra that I'd owned for eight years. I'd actually bought that truck brand new. But it was getting to a point where it was starting to have some mechanical issues and it didn't fit in the new garage here at Tall Pine Lodge. And so I really wanted to get a vehicle that would fit in the garage. I also wanted something with lower mileage and quite frankly I was at a point in my life where I wanted something a little bit smaller since we weren't going to be hauling a fifth wheel. So initially I went out looking for a Toyota Highlander. Now, the Highlanders can be really good tow vehicles in terms of their weight rating. However, the big difference between this Forerunner and a Highlander is, the Highlander is on a tr car chassis, whereas the Forerunner is built on a truck chassis, which is gonna give you just a little bit more stability. Now, it is gonna be a little bit more like a truck in terms of the ride, but I can tell you as far as ride goes, we really enjoy the Forerunner, both as a tow vehicle and as my everyday vehicle that I drive back and forth to work. Now, let's just go through some quick specs on the particular model before we start talking about it as a tow vehicle. As far as length goes, the 4Runner actually is approximately 190 inches in length, and luckily it does fit in our garage. The wheelbase is around 109 inches, and I really like that from the standpoint of stability when towing. The engine, which is always a big question in terms of will you have enough power for towing, this particular engine is a 4.0 liter V6, comes in at about 270 horsepower. And we'll talk a little bit later about how it's done in terms of uh, incline and steep grades, particularly when we went out west this summer to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, fuel tanked, 23 gallons. Again, I'm always concerned about that because obviously I want to make sure that I can travel some distance before filling up. Mileage wise, come in around 20 miles a gallon on the highway and when we're towing it drops down to approximately 11 and a half miles per gallon. The Toyota 4Runner that we own is the SR5 package, which is really the base package in the 4Runner line. Now, for me personally, it's got everything I'd want, from uh, power windows and power door locks, uh, AM, FM, CD, Bluetooth, um, and, and just, you know, basic things. Uh, the driver's side has the electronic seat controls, but what it doesn't have in this particular one is it doesn't have the upgraded uh, Sirius XM or the navigation system, and it doesn't have the sunroof, it doesn't have leather seats, and so Toyota obviously makes higher um, packages, but in this particular one, it's that base package, and we're completely happy with it. Uh, all the SR5s, to my understanding, or I mean all the Toyota 4Runners, to my understanding, come with the tow package. And so it's already going to have the receiver for towing, and it has the, the uh, wiring for the brakes and lights. This particular model comes with both the 4-pin and the 7-pin, and it also has the harness right up front. You just have to install it yourself. It's just a plug-and-play, plug it in, and then wire it into your brake controller, and you're set to go. So let's go ahead and do a walk around and talk about some of the features on the outside of this particular vehicle. So when you look at the exterior of the 4Runner, I really like the front of it because it really has this nice aggressive detailing and they utilize a 17 inch tire. Now these are not the original tires, I did have to replace them and I replaced them with the Michelin Defenders. They're a 17 inch tire. Um, I really like, it's a quiet ride, a smooth ride and yet the tread is aggressive enough for towing needs. It is a four door vehicle. So it does give us room for up to three passengers in the back, or in our case, some fur babies. The back is a lift gate, 
and it does provide you with plenty of cargo space. It does come with a 400 watt built-in inverter, which is really nice. If you ever need to plug in something, you can plug directly into the back here. And it's great for tailgating with the speakers built into the back tailgate. The back window actually comes down. And I really like that from the standpoint of if I need to get into the back and I don't want to use the lift gate, I can just go ahead and put the window down, reach in and get out whatever it is that I need. Uh, another nice feature is when I'm backing into a site, as opposed to trying to hear Patty through the side windows, I can put the back window down and hear much more easily in terms of where I need to go with the trailer. Now here's the re receiver that comes with the vehicle and right up underneath, you'll find your seven pin and four pin connectors. The top of the Forerunner has the side rails and I just purchased the crossbars online and installed them myself, which allows us to put our Thule rooftop carrier, giving us additional cargo space when towing. Now, in terms of what you're looking for with a tow vehicle and why I think this is actually the perfect tow vehicle for our Tab 400 by New Camp, obviously one of the things we look at is power. And again, with the V6 engine, we have had no issues with power. Um, we went out west twice now with it, once with the Hummingbird, once with the Tab 400, and in both cases, whether we were in Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, Washington, Oregon, no matter what the climb was, we always had plenty of power. Now, when we're cruising along at 65 to 70 miles an hour, she runs at about 22 to 2400 RPMs. When going up incline, sometimes it will rev up into the 3500 RPM range but normally there's no issues with power. Now going down those hills, we also have no issues with braking and having the electronic brakes on the trailer assist in that and therefore does a great job. Another area that I think you have to consider with towing is what is your visibility gonna be? And so we have the standard mirrors on the Forerunner. But as opposed to going to an add-on mirror, what I've basically done is added these little round mirrors that I picked up at Walmart for under five bucks for the pair, and they just use sticky tape, they stick on, and that helps to identify if anyone's in your blind spot. One of the real advantages to the Tab 400 is the fact that I can put the shades down both in the front window and the Stargazer window, and I can see out the back to know if there are cars tailgating me or following me and so that's a really nice feature of having this nice big window on the back side as well makes for easy viewing let's go ahead and jump inside the forerunner and talk about some of the inside features So the Forerunner is actually rated for somewhere between 4,700 and 5,000 pounds towing capacity, depending on which document you read. Originally, when I purchased this, we were towing a 23-foot uh, vintage cruiser by Gulfstream. And so technically, the car had the weight capacity to pull it. But what I found out very quickly on that first trip towing is the trailer actually felt like it was more in control of me than I was of the trailer. Part of that was the boxy design of the trailer and part of the fact that we were really pushing the weight limit. When we ended up downsizing to the Jayco Hummingbird and then ultimately our new Camp Tab 400, which both weighed in around 2,700 pounds and you could load them to 3,500 pounds, and they were both under 19 foot, then all of a sudden the Forerunner felt like it was completely in control of the tow experience and the trailer almost felt like it wasn't behind us. So I think the Forerunner at a 47 to 5,000 pound tow rating is perfect for anything under a total weight of 3,500 pounds because that gives you plenty of, of, of leeway in terms of safety and the fact that it does a really nice job in terms of power and braking. Now, in terms of when I'm actually driving, I'll be honest, most of the time I can run along at 65, 70 miles an hour and don't even realize the trailer is behind me. 
Again, with the mirrors, I'm able to use my small mirrors to check for blind spots. And with the Tab 400, I can look in my rear view mirror and actually see straight through the trailer to know if there are people behind me. So I always feel like I'm completely in control when I'm on the road. I also like the fact that it has plenty of power. So if I do need to get around a slower vehicle or in a pinch, just get going, I can literally punch the engine and know that we are going to take off with no problems. So in terms of a doggy takeoff, that's not an issue with this particular engine at, with our Tab 400. I also love the fact that if I have to make a quick stop, not only will the brakes on the 4Runner take care of me, but I have my Prodigy P3 from Takanja brake controller that I can always manually put a little extra brake on the trailer to get us slowed down. Now, in terms of what I run as far as um, hitching, all we run is a sw friction sway bar. We don't use weight distribution with this particular vehicle. Now, I did add the Timberin suspension enhancement system to this particular car, but I did that primarily because of the fact that we had about two to two and a half inches of squat when the 400 was hooked up. Now, um, by putting those uh, enhancement system from Timberin on the car, now we only have about one inch of squat. I had actually consulted with a couple dealerships who both agreed that weight distribution wasn't really necessary. The, the trailer and car were towing perfect. We never felt out of control. And honestly, the squat just wasn't that bad. But they had suggested that I look at either airbags or the timber and enhancement system for our suspension. And honestly, that took care of what little squat there was. And so now we can be almost perfectly level as we're going down the road with no issues. Now, just understand if you add something like airbags, bags or the timber and suspension enhancement system that's not actually taking the weight off the tongue all it's really doing is bringing the rear end of your vehicle up so always make sure you consult with your dealer to know what is going to be best for your tow vehicle and trailer setup um, I love the fact that on the dashboard I have options. I have both the tachometer to let me know how the engine is revving and I have my speedometer in the analog mode. But that center digital uh, console allows me to customize it to whatever I want. I can look at things that as average gas mileage. I can find out what my current gas mileage is. I can find things out like how much range do I have? Now, caution, what I have found is a lot of times when it says I still have say 100 miles to go, the closer, the farther I go, that comes down at a much quicker pace. But it at least gives you an idea of how close you are to running out of fuel. But what I really like is the fact that I can set the digital speedometer and that way I know exactly what my speed is if I'm really concerned about it. Um, I love the fact that the steering wheel is leather wrapped. It grips easy. Again, it helps me feel like I'm in control when I'm towing. And I love the fact that I have the audio options so I can control volume up and down for my radio or change modes right from the steering wheel so I can focus on the road as opposed to looking over at the radio controls. Now, as far as comfort systems in here, it's your basic AC heater system where you turn a knob from really cold to really hot and you, you find that comfort zone. You have a button for fan speed. This 4Runner is four-wheel drive and I love having that option. So whenever I have been in a situation to where maybe the, the the land is a little soft, maybe it's been raining out, I have that option that I can go into four-wheel drive either low or high and have the traction to pull the 4Runner out of any situation. Um, again, I love the button, push button, for the back window that I can lower that back window. And honestly, sometimes we just want some fresh breeze. I'll crack the back window and I'll crack a side window and we get nice airflow through the, uh, the vehicle. Now, let's talk about the back seat. The front seat obviously is two bucket seats split by the center console, which gives us a nice armrest and some storage space. But the back seat is actually a split bench. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So what I really love about the back seat is the fact that I never even moved the seat in the front from where I was sitting and comfortable for driving, and I still have plenty of leg room. So your passengers will have plenty of leg room back here if you're taking anyone along with you on the trip. Now, two big adults will fit back here very comfortably, but there is technically room for a third person. If you only have two people in the back, well, then you have the option of putting down the center, and it gives you a couple cup holders and a small armrest. Uh, heat comes from under the seats, air conditioning comes from the vents here in the center console, but a real nice plus for your passengers is there are two 12 volt outlets so they can be charging their audio devices while you're going down the road. 
Now, what I really like about this is I have options. Normally we have Truman back here, um, but if we need to, if we need additional cargo space, we have the option of dropping this back seat down to create a much larger cargo space. And because it is a split bench, we can either put down two thirds or we can put down one third or we can put down the entire back seat. Now it's a real simple process to put it down. All you really do is pull the tab on the seat itself to lift forward, you put down your headrest and then we push the button and down it goes. And that's how easy it is to create additional cargo space here in your Toyota 4Runner. Now in terms of cargo space, even with the back seat up, we still have a lot of cargo room back here. I love the fact that I can carry a couple big totes, uh, everything from my battery backup pack in case the car runs out of power and I need to jump start. I carry things like the antenna for the RV, a small fan, and then just lots of tools that we might need. But it also gives me still a lot of room here. Oh, and by the way, I already have two folding chairs, a pet bed, a pet fence, and lots of Aldi shopping bags. And notice it's big enough that even I can squeeze in here and still be somewhat comfortable. So there you have it, our 2014 Toyota 4Runner SR5. We absolutely love it as a tow vehicle. And again, I think the key points are plenty of power, plenty of braking. It's rated for more than enough in terms of trailer weight and tongue weight. And so we couldn't be happier with this. Now, if you're like me, every now and then you just get the itch to go looking for new vehicles. And recently I did. And I was looking at possibly upgrading to maybe the Subaru Accent, which is the new Subaru that has a 5,000 pound tow capacity. And I've even considered upgrading back to a truck and maybe going to a Toyota Tacoma. But I gotta be honest, I finally came to the conclusion, even though both of those vehicles are very nice and would do a good job in towing, I really like my 4Runner. And what I really like about it is the fact that, uh, number one, it's been a very dependable vehicle for us, and number two, I like the fact that it, even though it's on a truck chassis, I forget that we're in a more um, rugged SUV, and most of the time when I'm driving to and from work, I feel like I'm just in a car. That's how smooth of a ride it has. So. I came to the conclusion if I decide to upgrade, I'll probably get another Toyota 4Runner. So that's my overview on it. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. Let me know what size trailer you're towing and what you tow with. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you on down the road. Good night.